Hello, and welcome to Tommy J's Vinyl Showdown, episode one. So on this show, I'm going to basically have a look at uh, records in my collection, share some facts about them, and also give my own thoughts and opinions. Today, I'm going to have a look at Tango in the Night by Fleetwood Mac. It's one of my favourite pop records of the 80s. And it's an absolute time capsule um, in the sense of how it it really encapsulates that whole time period. And it's got a fantastic energy to it that I really admire. It's the 14th studio album by Fleetwood Mac. It was released on the 13th of April, 1987, which is 10 years after Rumours. And it's the album that comes after Mirage, the one with um, McVie and Buckingham and Nix on the front in a strange embrace, which um, to me, you know, it's okay. It's it's not a great album for me, Mirage. It has Gypsy on it, which of course has gone down as a Fleetwood Mac classic, in all fairness, but Tango in the Night is just um, a much better executed version of a similar thing, really. It's just hit after hit, banger after banger. You get the one of the most famous Mac lineups on this, uh, Lindsey Buckingham. Um, this would be his last album. Um, until he rejoined much later and left and rejoined as he as he did over time. Uh, Mick Fleetwood, of course, Christine V, who I often miss when when she's not involved, and I think is very underrated in terms of what she brings to the whole um, unit. John McV, bass guitar, uh, Stevie Nicks, of course singing vocals on a lot of these tracks. She um, was a, was absent for a lot of the process from what I've gathered and did just dip in bare minimum to get the vocals down because she was really pursuing the, the solo stuff by this point in 87. Um, oh, an interesting thing about the artwork, it was just uh, a painting that Lindsay had hanging in in his very fancy house that he bought with all his rooms money. I'm just gonna dive in now and uh, do a track by track sort of thing. So it opens with Big Love, which is a very typical Buckingham tune with an absolutely amazing guitar hook. Uh, it, it's a great version. He, I'd say they've topped it. There's a live version where he plays this soaring acoustic finger picking version and he's just screaming like, looking out for love. It's like, it's so amazing. And then we get uh, Seven Wonders, which again was a single. Um, that's a very of the time video. Uh, this is one that Nix has re recorded for uh, American Horror Story and all sorts of stuff. Uh, yeah, a great tune, one I, one I probably used to enjoy more. Um, then at number three you've got Everywhere, which is just a very classic song, everyone knows that. And again, some fantastic back and forth on the vocals here, which is always an important Mac factor, a Mactor. The collaboration, the different forces at play. I always enjoy a band where there's there's not always a clear front runner and it's not just all about you know the one person and it, there, there are bands where I really appreciate that you know but for me s stuff like Dire Straits you, you could mostly say oh well that's the Mark Knopfler show and I know some people will, will disagree with that but I've heard a lot of his subsequent stuff and do feel that's where it lies whereas if you listen to all the individual um, Fleetwood Mac stuff you can really tell like where the strengths are and where where they all complement each other and come together 
Um, track four, yeah, Carolina. Um, very good song again. Um, Tango in the Night, brilliant, the title track. Another Buckingham banger. Uh, Mystified, a bit more subdued. That's a bit B1. Uh, also with Buckingham, just this in there. And then for me, the, this, the second half is, is still great. It has some like more forgettable and bizarre moments on it. But um, but yeah, it kicks off with Little Lies, which again, like we all know, you can even you can even play some of these in a, a modern a modern club, and they'd, they'd still just go down a storm. And I don't even mean as a musician. I just mean if you just put the record on. And everyone would be belting that out. And again, um, McV, you know, singing it. Lots of people getting mixed up, don't know that she's writing all this stuff, all these like great classic songs. And then um, the next track on side two is uh, Family Man, which always bemuses me for some reason. It's just like Buckingham screaming about it's been a family man there's this really weird um, it must be tuned down surely it's just it keeps coming back to this oh family man and it's something you'd expect on maybe he was listening to Zappa or something I don't know it sounds quite out of place with the the, the polished glossy sound of, of this album and then um, yeah welcome to the room Sarah which is a uh, a reference to the the one on Tusk. The, that's a really nice song on Tusk. That's that's good. It's not as good as the one it's referencing, I would say. And then yeah, it closes out with four, five, and six of the second side, or you know, to twelve if you count that way. And uh, isn't it midnight? Great. Uh, when I see you again, you and I, part one, two. It, it's it's solid, and what surprises me is like how many absolute known bangers are just on this this one album, and it's it's it seems old now, but even at the time, this would have been uh, late in Fleetwood Mac's career, even with the um, the the Lindsay Nicks um, lineup because they'd been going in so many forms for so long and this this is one of those uh, almost uh, revival albums, you know, that, that breathe fresh air into it. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, the, the success of this didn't keep them together and they went on to do Behind the Mask, um, which it, it's it's really just no comparison. It's such a massive step down after, um, and it it just really does miss the um, the Lindsay this one. And they're they're all very capable, but there's just something about it. It's it's so lacklustre. It's it's beige. It, even even the covers kind of beige and has like nothing about it. And I've, I've listened to it, you know, a few times. I don't personally think it's as bad as some of the brutalist reviewers of the time giving it, like, half a star and, and stuff like that. But it's, uh, by, you know, good Mac standards, it is, it is definitely not the best at all. And after Tango, it would have been amazing if we got just, like, a, a couple more really solid... Uh, classic albums out of it but um, yeah that's uh, pretty much all I have to say about it I really enjoy it um, Tango that is not behind the mask uh, I hope you do uh, let me know your thoughts on it maybe you, you think it's really weak I know for some people um, it clashes with that almost much pure rocky sound that they have earlier on you know on, on self-titled and stuff like that but during this phase of Fleetwood Mac in the late 80s going into the 90s like nothing nothing comes close really for me um, so 
So yeah, there you go. I'll see you next time. Uh, take it easy. I'll see you on the flip side.